Welcome back to the ALS series. This video is part two, and we're breaking down the tachycardia algorithm, one of the core pathways you'll need to understand when you're doing your ALS course and exam. This comes up in MCQs, simulated scenarios, and in real clinical settings, especially when managing unstable patients with fast heart rates. In part one, we covered the full ALS algorithm, including how to handle shockable and non-shockable rhythms in cardiac arrest. If you missed that, you can watch it now on my channel. It's linked in the description. And in part three, we'll go through the bradycardia algorithm, which will be uploaded within the next week. Today, though, it's all about tachycardia, step by step, with a full breakdown of what to do based on the rhythm and patient stability. Let's get into it. Tachycardia is defined as a heart rate above 100 beats per minute. But not all fast heart rates are dangerous. That's why the first step is always a proper ABCDE assessment. While you're assessing the patient, ask yourself, are there any adverse features? And by that we mean signs of shock, like low blood pressure or poor perfusion, syncope, has the patient collapsed or blacked out, chest pain, which could indicate myocardial ischemia, or signs of heart failure, like pulmonary edema. If any of these are present, the patient is unstable. You go straight to the shock pathway. If there are no adverse features, then the patient is stable enough for a more detailed rhythm analysis, and you follow the non-shock pathway. I'll be making a separate video going through the A to E assessment in full, so make sure you're subscribed if you want to learn that in detail. So, if the patient is unstable, your immediate action is synchronized DC cardioversion, also known as a shock. You can deliver up to three synchronized DC shocks, reassessing rhythm and clinical condition after each one. If the shocks are unsuccessful, you then give amiodarone 300 mg IV over 10 to 20 minutes. Once that's given, start an infusion of amiodarone 900 mg over 24 hours. Keep monitoring the rhythm, blood pressure, and clinical response. And if the patient remains unstable, consider further cardioversion and escalate for expert help. Now, let's talk about stable patients, the ones with no adverse features. Here's where the algorithm branches out. You now need to look at the ECG and answer two simple questions. Is the rhythm narrow or broad? Is it regular or irregular? These two things guide the rest of the management. Let's go through each possibility. If it's a narrow QRS complex, that usually means the origin is above the ventricles. So it's a supraventricular tachycardia, or SVT. If the rhythm is regular, it's most likely AVNRT, atrioventricular nodal reentrant tachycardia, or AVRT, atrioventricular reentrant tachycardia. In either case, your first step is to try vagal maneuvers, like a Valsalva. If that doesn't work, move on to adenosine, give six milligrams IV rapid push. If there's no effect, try 12 milligrams, and if still no effect, another 18 milligrams. Adenosine briefly blocks the AV node. This can interrupt the circuit and restore normal rhythm. If it works, great. If it doesn't, get senior input and consider alternative causes. Now, if the narrow complex rhythm is irregular, it's likely atrial fibrillation. Here, the aim is rate control using beta blockers or calcium channel blockers like diltiazem, but avoid these in decompensated heart failure. Also remember, if the AF is ongoing, consider anticoagulation using the CHADS 2 VSC score. If the QRS complex is broad, the rhythm likely originates from the ventricles, so think VT. If the rhythm is regular, assume it's monomorphic VT. Even if you're not 100% sure, treat it as VT unless proven otherwise. Give amiodarone 300 mg IV over 20 to 60 minutes. Then start an infusion of 900 milligrams over 24 hours. If it's a regular broad complex, possible causes include pre-excited AF, as in Wolf, Parkinson, White, or polymorphic VT, like Torsades de Pointe. In these cases, avoid AV node blockers, like adenosine, beta blockers, and calcium channel blockers. Instead, get expert help immediately. And if the patient is deteriorating, prepare for defibrillation. For torsades de point, give magnesium 2 mg over 10 minutes. That's the ALS tachycardia algorithm explained step by step. If you missed part 1, where we covered the full ALS cardiac arrest algorithm, you can watch it now on my channel. Part 3, covering the bradycardia algorithm, will be uploaded within the next week, so stay tuned. And don't forget, Subscribe to IMG Doctor Diaries. It's the road to 10,000 subscribers, and every click helps me keep making more videos like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.